Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Matthew. This is the last video in type 2 application of complex integration. And this problem is very special, extra special because it violates our convergence condition. Do you remember when we started type 2, I told you the convergence condition m should be greater than 0 and it will be polynomial divided by polynomial. Of course, that's okay because it is 1. 1 is a polynomial of degree 0. So, we have polynomial divided by polynomial and the degree of the denominator is bigger than the numerator. So, that condition is okay and multiplied by sine or cos. That's okay. But the limit is not working. Limit should be from minus infinity to infinity. Another big problem is Imagine what will be the singularity of this function. Come on, you know the method. We have been doing this for a long time now. The first thing you are going to do is, you will tell, consider the integral, integral over c, sin mz means, what will we write? e to the power i m z, the whole divided by z, dz. You know the method in type 2. We convert x into z and if you see sin, if you see cos, you will put e to the power i into m into z. Now look at the singularity. The singularity is z equal to 0. And that is a big problem. Can you see the singularity is in the x-axis? If the singularity is in the x-axis, the convergence condition gets violated. Anyway, I hope you remember we had a similar situation uh, in type 1. And what we did is, we made some small circle in such a way that our singularity will be uh, avoided. But there is more problem here. In type 1, we used Cauchy's lemma. Cauchy's lemma can be used when r tends to infinity as well as when r tends to 0. But in type 2, we use Jordan's lemma and Jordan's lemma can be used only when r tends to infinity. So this problem has to be tackled in a very different manner. Okay, so I hope you are ready with your pen and paper. So as always, let's start. So I have the integral over c e to the power i m z the whole divided by z dz. This can be written as minus r to small r. So look at this. What I did is, since the singularity is the origin, since the singularity is the origin, I made a small circle mod z equal to r. So this point is minus r, this point is plus r, and this is our usual minus r, this is our usual plus r. And at the end, what I am going to do is, I am going to make r tend to infinity. So it will be from minus infinity to plus infinity. And I will make this small r very, 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 very negligible. So that the circle will be extremely small. And that is exactly what we are going to do. Anyway, I think you understood. Integral over c will be equal to minus r to minus r plus c1 plus c1 plus means the small circle and r to r and finally c plus. Okay, now by Jordan's lemma, but remember in your examination you have to write this properly. Uh, according to Jordan's lemma, this integral will vanish. So, I am going to call this as equation number 1. Now, one more thing. Do we have any singularities in this um, contour? This is our contour. Contour means the part after we neglect the uh, singularity here. Did you understand? The singularity is z equal to 0. But I created capital C in such a way that what you see is capital C. Capital C means it is from minus r to minus r and then c1 plus and then r to capital R and then c plus. So this is a contour without any singularity. So if there is any if there is any contour without singularity, we learned in Cauchy's 
theorem integral will be equal to zero so basically this side will become zero and we get integral minus r to minus r plus integral c1 plus c1 plus means the small circle plus r to capital r is equal to zero if you understand this we have covered like 70 percent of the problem so once more let me introduce you to this problem a very important type the first problem that i noticed is the limit is not minus infinity to infinity but that's not a big deal now the second and the most important trouble that i saw is we have only one singularity and that singularity comes on the x-axis but we cannot apply this method if there is a singularity in the x-axis so what did i do i created a new circle in such a way that the total contour will be free of singularities according to cauchy's theorem integral over the contour that you see here red orange red red that will be equal to zero so this plus this plus this plus this equal to zero but by jordan's lemma already this is zero now that's it now all we have to do is integration so let's go for integration so what i got is minus r to r e power i m x by x dx why did i put x because minus r to r is in the x axis plus integral c1 plus e power i m z divided by z dz because this has no connection with the x-axis it is the orange color the small circle plus integral r to capital r e to the power i m x divided by x dx and that is equal to zero i hope you understood how we got zero in your examination you have to explain now this is super easy look at this what is going to happen next is r will tend to infinity because we want from minus infinity to infinity and small r will become negligible because we have to make the circle smaller and smaller once more let me make it very clear jordan's lemma can be applied only here and that is why i cancelled it here because when we apply jordan's lemma when r tends to infinity this integral will vanish cauchy's lemma can be applied for both tends to infinity tends to zero but here for tends to zero we don't have any other option so look at this mod z equal to r is a circle so z equal to r e power i theta don't ask me why because we learned this long back when we started integration so dz equal to r into i into e power i theta d theta and now can you see this circle in this circle theta varies from this is pi to zero normally in a circle it will be in the anti-clockwise direction it will be 0 to 2 pi but here we start the circle from this point so pi degree so 180 degree to 0 pi to 0 so the limit here will be minus infinity to 0 because r tends to infinity smaller tends to 0 e power i m x by x dx plus integral pi to 0 e to the power i m what is the value of z r e power i theta r e power i theta divided by what is the value of z r e power i theta multiplied by the derivative of this part is r i e power i theta d theta plus integral 0 to infinity e power i m x by x dx equal to 0 think for a moment it's a little bit complicated anyway now good news can you see when we combine this and this we get integral minus infinity to plus infinity e power i m x by x dx plus um, look at this this and this gets cancelled and this i will come outside now think about it r is a very small number so this part is negligible and e power 0 can you see e to the power 0 this part will be tending to 0 r tends to 0 so e power 0 is 1 so we get pi to 0 1 d theta once more i'll explain 
r tends to 0 eventually so e to the power 0 is 1 and is equal to 0 that's it we are almost at the end so minus infinity to infinity e power i m x divided by x dx what is the integration of d theta that will be theta upper limit and upper lower limit equal to pi i skipped some steps that's not difficult look at this integration of d theta is theta within the limit pi to 0 plug in upper limit minus lower limit we get minus pi so eventually this is equal to pi but this is not the question they asked the question they asked was like sine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply minus infinity to infinity oh no wait a minute we have to make it like two times zero to infinity because the question was like that e power i mx divided by x and dx equal to pi by 2 because this 2 will go to the other side now this will become integral 0 to infinity i forgot one i so this i will be here i have to write that i correct it so 0 to infinity this is cos mx plus i sin mx divided by x equal to i pi by 2 dx is there now split this into two integrals 0 to infinity cos mx by x dx plus i integral sin mx by x dx equal to i pi by 2 now the last part equating imaginary part because we, they asked like what you call sin mx by x and that's it um, so always remember at the last in type 2 you have to convert it into sine and cos so we have completed three questions by using the three questions get a clear idea how to work out the problems and after that your job starts now you have to practice lots and lots and lots of questions similar to this so that you will get good marks in the exam so i'll be back soon with the last type in improper integration so till then my friends 